question 3.49 here. It says, uh, find the V9 I9 in the circuit of figure. Okay, so using to that uh, to tackle this question, I'll be using the mesh analysis method. Um, so what I usually do yeah, is to draw out the meshes uh, in the in the graph or figure, and then I usually set them to clockwise. It's just a conventional way, way of doing it. it. It doesn't really matter what um, direction you want it to set your mesh to mesh current to, um, but instead, this is what I do. All right. And then I will be applying Kushtrov voltage law after we uh, set our mesh. So um, starting from bottom left corner, I guess, uh, we can go ahead and get started. So two times I1 um, plus, <coughs> excuse me, I t uh, one times I1 minus one times I two, I3. And um, so, oh yeah. I remember, uh, I forgot to mention this, when um, when two meshes or more meshes shares one or more um, circuit source, then you add them together and combine those two meshes or, or multiple meshes and forms a super mesh. Okay, So instead of I1 and I2, they're going to become IS, I super. Right. Okay. So one minus I three, and then we're going to continue. Just go through, go straight to here, and then it's going to be two I two minus two I three, and plus fifty four volts. And so yeah, the direction of the current when it enters the uh, enters the positive terminal is positive fifty four. Is just how I've been taught. I know somebody, um, some of you are taught is negative. It doesn't really matter, but you should get the same answer in the end, right? Okay, and this is for the super mesh, and we can simplify it. all of this equals zero. So let's sim simplify negative 54 volts. All right, and then this is I1, I1. So 3I1 plus 2I2, and then minus uh, 1 and 2, so 3I3, okay? 3I3. All right, so now let's look at the uh, I three and then we'll also super mesh i3 and we're also applying the Kushtrov voltage law in that case um so we can start from bottom left top left corner this be i uh, three times i3 um plus two times i3 minus two times i2 right so even though this is a super mesh this is dependent like so when we it's still the i2 current that is affecting this right affecting this one so this is going to the left and this is going to the right at this point, right? In this, in I3's perspective. Therefore, it's I3 minus I2, right? And we have to use the one, this resistor, the other current that's affecting this resistor, right? So I3, so two ohm resistor is affecting by I3 and I2. Okay, so continue, we'll go on to the one ohm resistor and that's gonna be plus uh, one I3 uh, minus one. I1, I1, right? This whole thing gives us zero because there's not really a voltage source. So yeah, this as far as we, we have. So negative one, I1, um, negative I2, excuse me, and plus six, I3, right? Okay, and this whole thing gives us zero. All right, fantastic. Now, um, also do remember that, so here, so we have one, two. So I have to figure out V naught, I naught, and I one, I two, and I three. We don't have to figure out I one, I two, and I three, but we need those information to solve our problem. So we have five unknowns, but so far we only have two equations. Therefore, it's telling us we do not have enough, right? We need to find more um, information. So um, if we're looking at this loop, loop one over here. Right, I1 is going in the negative direction of I0, right? So if you, so I, I0 is going down from this, and then this is, I1 is going clockwise, so it's going up, l l right, down, and left, right? So it's going up at this knot, right? Let's call it nod A, okay? Let's call this nod B, here's nod C, all right? 
nonetheless so at not a and so we're gonna have to use uh, well this is still push off current law um, but it's i1 uh, equals negative i is not right so we can use uh, push off current law at another place at not b right so this is um going clockwise so at this at not b let's write this at not b right it's going in right it's going into the knot it's going on right so therefore so and according to question of current law the amount of current entering equals the amount of current exiting so i not right or way use i1 so we're going to write i1 for now so i1 is entering so plus 2 i naught right this is also entering into that knot and then there's i2 i2 you see it's going up but it's going to the right right we're looking at this one this one over here because this is already figured out there's only three and this is represented by i1 this is represented by the current source so we're looking at this current over here and it's represented by i2 this is leaving right so i2 and as we know uh, i2 i naught I1 equals negative I0, so I1 minus 2I1 equals I2, therefore negative I1 equals I2. Okay? Fantastic. Alright. Um, therefore, uh, in this case, we can figure something out. Um, Alright, so I have to figure out what I3 is. Yeah, that's fine. So, I2 is negative I1, right? So you can just plug that in, right? I2 equals negative I1. So we're going to plug into here and we're going to plug it into here. Okay. I3 plus, so minus 2I1 now, right? Minus 2I1. Minus 3i3 equals negative 54 volts, and then this is negative i1 plus i1 plus 2i1 plus 6i3, and this whole thing is going to give us what? It's going to give us zero. Okay, so this is, and then if we simplify this, it's going to become 1 1i1 one minus 3i3 equals negative 54. And then this is uh, I1 plus 6 I3. And this is equals to 0. So if this, so we, if this equation minus this equation, right? Uh, so 1 I1. Okay. This minus this, that cancels out. 3 minus, uh, negative 3 minus 6, that's negative 9. And then uh, negative 54 minus 0 is negative 54. Okay, so you divide my 9 by both sides, and then I3 is going to give you uh, 6 ampere. Right, check if the ohms are kilo ohms. No, it's not, so it's ampere instead of milliamps. Okay, so fantastic. Now we can figure out what I1 is. Right, now I have to go figure out what I1 is. So we can plug I3 over here. Um, so I1 negative minus so 3 times 6 that's 18 equals negative 54 right so plus 18 um, that is gonna become uh, 6 36 right negative 36 okay and then yeah that's not right Yeah, because if I plug it into here, oh wait, never mind. It, yeah, it's if it's if it's six and negative thirty-six. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's still thirty. Okay, so I one is negative thirty-six ampere, and then therefore I naught is thirty-six ampere, right? Because of this relationship that we uh, found earlier. 
Okay, so we find I naught. Now it's time for find V naught. So V naught in this equate in this uh, problem, it's it's a little interesting. It's a little weird than usually how we've been tackled this. But if you passed like chapter two, you should be able to like know what this is talking about, right? So V naught is actually the voltage across like across from here, right? So V naught is actually plus one minus one and this is I one like this is this is V naught okay it's literally the 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 V naught equals V B C right uh, not B and not C like it's literally between these two points so what is V naught that's should be pretty straightforward or if I want V one is therefore we just do a, a regular loop uh, Kristoff voltage law, right? We we'll just do a regular loop, uh, reg regular loop Kristoff voltage law. Then, so let's say I one, so it's going this direction. Therefore, uh, two ohm times negative uh, thirty six, right? Um, plus one times negative thirty six minus so I three. I this is uh, six. Okay. And then plus v naught and equals to zero, and that's literally how we find v naught. So that is this is 72 negative plus um, let's see, this is 42. So 42 uh, minus right because yeah, this is 40 36 a minus 6 42 negative 40 yeah. And then okay, and plus v naught equals zero. You move these two to the right right hand side of the equation. V naught equals 114, right? 114 volts. Okay, fantastic. So now we figured out what um, v naught is, and we found out what I'm uh, sorry, I naught is 36A ampere, and the v naught is 114 volts. Okay. And this is how you solve this problem. All right. So yeah, I guess this is uh, they added one more analysis, one more extra step than the one that we usually are encountered. So it requires you to find the volts across a, a area. So um, it's not that hard. Don't get like um, surprised by it, right? Just um, think about what you've learned in the past, and then apply it. Uh, and then you should be able to figure this out relatively quickly. So 3.49 is this question. And then there's another one, which is I'm going to produce later. It's a 3.51. And it's also, it's a, I guess, an upgraded version of this question. All right, so keep your eye out for that one. Okay, hopefully uh, this was helpful. Good luck on your studies. And I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.